I make it a practice in my own life. If I'm reading a book and part of my responsibility as an evangelist is also to try and understand some of the secular novels where that people are reading in order to try and bridge the gap, but many of those are full of rubbish. Suddenly I come to a page where I can see the next 10, 15, 20 are all in the area of demonstrating the vileness of the human heart and I just skip them over completely. I have no business playing with those. Ephraim is joined to idols, leave her alone. If there's an influence in your life tonight that's hurting you for God, God is asking you to turn away from that evil influence and turn to the influence that God is trying to build in your life towards positive righteousness. But that's not the only instruction in this verse. The instruction goes far beyond in a tragic statement here. You see, what God is really saying is, this was the nation that I had set up as a light through which was to be transmitted all the precious truths about my nature and my characteristics, would you please take away that initial desire of mine now and close your eyes and ears to the nation that I once wanted you to look to and take your examples from? One or two of the best-known Christian authors today in the areas of family are men with broken homes themselves. I'm not saying this unkindly. For it is just as possible for me to end up in the same kind of a situation that they have ended up with. I'm not saying this castigatingly of their spiritual destiny or anything like that. All I know is this, I would be utterly embarrassed, sir, if I had let down my wife, if I had let down my children to then be peddling literature and books without without any sense of wrongdoing and telling them how they ought to be running their lives. Many of the musicians today professionally, morally unable to measure up to the very doctrines they're singing about. Now all I'm suggesting to you is this, not a hypocritical role, but an embarrassing situation. A well-known preacher left his family, left his wife, and I walked into a bookstore that very week that the news had broken, and in the front door there was a big record rack, which this fellow had put out for many years, the marriage repair kit. Now it was on half price, you know, get rid of them now. You see, I'm just driving at one issue, and I hope you're not misunderstanding what I'm saying. If I were to stand up behind the pulpits of this world, telling fathers how to bring up their children, telling men how to be good husbands, telling families how to handle every simple situation that arises in their household, and I myself were to make a mess of my own life, it would be grossly humiliating for me to even touch upon the issues anymore, other than in remorse. And here's God looking at the apple of his eye and says to Judah and the surrounding nations, the apple of my eye has joined herself to idols. Leave her alone. God is saying, no longer look to the nation that I wanted you to look towards. And as we go to Malachi tomorrow, we will see the deeper heartbreak where God actually says to them, I asked everybody to look to you, set you up as a nation upon a hill, etc., etc., etc. That's why Jesus cries in the New Testament and says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had only known the things which belonged unto your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. Let not God ever have to say about you and me telling our neighbors to leave our influence alone. Can you imagine that? If you are a professing Christian and God tells your neighbor, leave that influence alone. This is the heartache in the mind of God as he's trying to tell the nations around his program. Evil influence, that's his first indictment.